Welcome back to the channel and here at Kitenge TV we offer a lot about cryptocurrencies. So that means cryptocurrencies, price prediction, technical analysis and news updates. And today we are going to look top 5 things to watch in markets in the week ahead. So, with the Federal Reserve almost certainly set to deliver a half percentage point rate hike at its upcoming meeting on Wednesday, investors will be awaiting further insights on its next steps to combat surging inflation. The labor market is another key part of the Fed's mandate and Friday's U.S. employment report is expected to show that jobs growth remained robust in April. Earnings will continue to roll in as investors contemplate what was the worst month for stocks in more than two years. Meanwhile, the Bank of England is expected to deliver its fourth rate hike in a row one day after the Fed on Thursday. Here's what you need to know to start your week. The Fed rate hike With a half percentage point rate hike by the Fed already backed in, Investors will be focusing on signals from Fed Chair Jerome Powell at his post policy meeting press conference on the future path of interest rates, plans for reducing its almost 9 trillion US dollar balance sheet, and the Fed's view on when inflation may peak. Many investors and analysts believe the Fed will continue to surprise on the hawkish side as it attempts to contain the worst inflation in four decades, fueling concerns that aggressive monetary tightening could trigger a recession. The view of 40 policymakers on how persistent the current pace of inflation is expected to remain while be critical to future monetary policy tightening plans. The next one is non-farm payrolls report. Friday's non-farm payrolls report is expected to show that the U.S. economy added 280,000 jobs in April, while the unemployment rate is expected to tick down to 3.5% average hourly earnings are expected to post another solid increase. The jobs report comes on the heels of the data last Thursday shown that the U.S. economy unexpectedly contracted in the first quarter, but the decline was largely driven by a wider trade deficit as imports surged and a slowdown in the pace of inventory accumulation. Domestic demand remained robust, allaying fears of a recession. But the outlook for the economy continues to be clouded by concerns over the economic impact of the war in Ukraine rising bond yields, new coronavirus lockdown in China that could stymie improvements in global supply chains, and more aggressive monetary policy tightening by the Fed. The next one is earning reports. Earning season is set to continue with investors, watching reports from PFISA, Starbucks, Airbnb Inc and ConocoPhillips during the week among others. The month of April marked the S&P 500's biggest monthly fall since the onset of the coronavirus pandemic in early 2020, while the tech-heavy Nasdaq lodged its largest monthly drop since the 2008 financial crisis. Downbeat results and worries about aggressive monetary police tightening by the Fed hammered mega cap technology and growth stocks. The sell off accelerated on Friday as the ASP 500 tumbled 3.6%, its biggest one day drop since June 2020, following a disappointing earnings and guidance from Amazon that sent the e commerce giant's shares down 14%. The next one is economic data. Aside from the Fed meeting, earnings and the April jobs report, the economic calendar features several key economic reports in the coming week, including the ISM manufacturing and service PMYS on Mondays and Wednesday respectively. Sold readings here would like to underline the view that the economy will expand in the second quarter keeping Fed tightening plus on track. 
The report on Jolte's job openings is due to on Tuesday, followed a day later by the ADP non-farm payrolls figures. The Labor Department is told to publish the weekly report on initial jobless claims on Thursday ahead of Friday's non-farm payrolls data. The next one is Bank of England meeting. The Bank of England is widely expected to deliver its fourth straight rate hike when it meets the day after the Fed on Thursday, the first time it will have done that since 1997. Bank of England Governor Andrew Bale has said the bank is treading a very tight line between Cuban inflation, which at 7% is more than three times its target and avoiding a recession. A quarter point hike to 1% would meet a precondition for the Bank of England to start actively selling bonds its holds. Active bond sales will be tightening monetary conditions but could hurt a fluttering economy and no major central bank has yet started the process. That's all I have for you today. Till next time, bye bye.